My name is Quentin Higgins and I survived a drunk driving crash that claimed the life of 27 others. The trip we went on, I actually got invited by my best friend, Anthony Marks, and he found out that the church took a annual trip to Kings Island. So he came back to our trailer park and invited our little crew. It was a day of fun, drove up there, got to Kings Island. Uh, it was my first time going to Kings Island. For me, I was like going to Disney World because I just didn't get a chance to do stuff like that growing up. Uh, we loaded the bus at 9.30 to head back to, to Radcliffe. And uh, I got on the bus, uh, I was sitting with Pam Huey. Uh, we immediately were just talking about the day. Uh, I think she fell asleep, you know, half the bus kind of fell asleep and we were in and out. And all of a sudden, I remember hearing a big crash. And then all of a sudden, we all jumped up in the aisle. It wasn't the, the initial fire that came in and, and uh, hurt most, most of the kids. It was the heat that came in that was, that was just so unbearable. It started melting your skin. And then next thing you remember, all the kids just start screaming and were pushing and, and just fighting each other to get out because it was just so hot inside the bus. At 15, I, for some reason, I knew I was going to die that night. I mean, there was I can't even explain the feeling that you know, of what death feels like, what I knew I was gonna die because in that moment, there was no way I was gonna get up or get off that bus. My first vision was seeing uh, dead kids at the door and I, stuck, I uh, struck my hand, stuck my hand through them and a truck driver pulled me off and laid me on the uh, media next to the bus. And I remember looking up in the sky and seeing an orange glow. You didn't realize it was actually the bus on fire. I remember when the amulets came, they started cutting my clothes off and pouring saline solution over my arms. And that's when the pain hit. Uh, hand severely burned and covered up, second, third degree burns. But the main injury were my lungs were severely damaged. I could not breathe on my own for two weeks. When you get burned, they do something called debreeding. This was part of our therapy to, to help our burns heal. They come in and they scrub your skin as hard as they can on top of your burns which keeps your uh, burns from scarring up. And they, day in and day out, I, I used to tell my mom, I'd rather have been, sh I honestly wish I would have died. A lot of the survivors, a lot of the kids start asking questions and they were told for us to keep our TVs off in the rooms. One night my TV got left on and I don't know why it's in my head, everything was like black and white in those days, but Channel 11 News was on. They were talking about our crash and we knew some of the details by that time but all the names started scrolling down the screen of all the, the kids that had died. And I seen Anthony Marks, which was my best friend. And I lost it, started crying and screaming, but they went and got my mom. She came in and calmed me down. But it took me probably another week to understand that here I am, and just let alone I'm in the hospital, I'm injured, and I was in this crash, but so many people lost their life. You know, there's... didn't expect that to, to understand at 15 that you're around so much death no it's hard enough to be a, such a young person and see someone hear about death and see people die but then again you realize it's your friends so many people died that night and that here I am alive part of my story my father at the time was a, a recovering addict and I didn't have a relationship with him. And to be honest, my father was the, he was the one that was hurt most of seeing me hurt. I found out about the guy that hit our bus that night, two weeks after I got out of the hospital. And I'll be honest, again, you hear me talk about my father being an alcoholic drug addict at the time. You know, I knew what drunk driving was. You know, you, you heard that floating around, but you didn't know. In those days, it was kind of unheard of that people got hit by someone impaired, you know, hit by a drunk driver. You know, you, you hear it, but it's like, on this magnitude, this, you mean someone drunk caused this crash? So about two weeks after I got out of the hospital, I think it's about when I heard the details of one man caused this crash. And I became angry because in my mind, I, I was, I, I would think, you know, why would someone purposely, because it was on purpose to me, you just don't understand why someone would kill 27 people. Why was he drinking? He, this man was drinking and he hit our bus. And then we also found out years later that people seen him and could have stopped him. You know, we found out that someone actually took his keys and gave them back. You know, 
in my mindset still as an adult, you don't understand why this crash was not prevented. I thought in my mind he would go to jail for life. And as the years went on, we, we talked about it more. We found out he got sentenced to 16 years and actually spent nine or 10 years in because he was a good prisoner. He took 27 innocent lives. How in the world did this man get less time in prison than the people he killed? I became a bus driver 12 years ago and it pushed me to look at teenagers every day. It pushed me that when I seen a teenager that looked like they were having a bad day, that was a reflection of me because I literally can look at a teenager's face and see a struggle that I had on me growing up because of my father and because of the crash. You know, people think I'm a mean bus driver, but I'm not. You know, I'll joke and tell kids, get your feet out of my aisle. You know, Mr. Higgins, you're being mean, which is awesome that they say it. I'm like, no, I said, a lot of the kids around here know who I am. I'm like, do you understand who I am? Yes, Mr. Higgins, we know about the crash. I want to make sure you get home safe. Reason being, there's like being your, putting your feet in the aisle is not serious. And I tell them an aspect of our crash. One of the reasons a lot of us didn't get off the bus that night is we had things in the aisle. So... I always use it like this. If I'm driving a bus and we have a crash, let's say I'm in the aisle, you're in the aisle, say you pass out and you're in the aisle, people gotta step over you to get out. So keep my aisles clear, just in case something happens, I can get you off this bus safely. People can get off safely. This bus we're sitting on is my personal bus. Uh, to about 2014, I actually was sitting on my school bus at an elementary school. It was crazy. I'm sitting on my bus and I feel in my heart. I hear it in my spirit. Go buy a bus like you were on in 1988. And I said out loud, who said that? And I started looking around because I'll be honest, that's the dumbest thing in the world. And it was scary at the same time. But I was talking to another bus driver and about what I thought about I wanted to do. And she found this bus on Craigslist. And she sent the guy my information through email. This guy named Terry called me, not even two weeks after he got my information. He told me, he said, I used to teach DUI classes in 86. He said, are you sure you wanna do something like that? I said, nope. He said, Quentin, me and my wife prayed about it. We're gonna take the bus off Craigslist. He goes, you are meant to do this. I said, no. He told me information about the bus and we got off the phone. I went home and told my wife. It scared the death out of me. But I knew I had to do this. My oldest daughter had come home. She was in college and she had never, at that time I had started speaking slowly. I spoke at a school and my oldest daughter seen me speak for the first time. And she told my, she said, Dad, you have a gift of the way you tell your story. And she called me her hero. Whew, because she has seen me struggle with this stuff. But she's seen me turn it into something to help people. Me and friends drove to Lexington and bought this bus. And it scared me. This bus is identical to what we were on in 88. The pictures on this bus... I decided, because on the outside of the bus, it says May 14th, 1988, 27 reasons not to drink and drive. I wanted people to have a visual of these kids' faces, so I decided to put the pictures of the, on the seats of the kids that died, actually in the seat they would have been sitting in. I want people, when they step on this bus, to understand the magnitude of loss of one person drinking and driving. I wanted to have something to memorialize the kids we lost that night. That's what was in my heart, truthfully, just to something for people to remember not to drink and drive. I, this, this has nothing to do with me. This was for, for, this is for Andy. 
This is for the 26 others that we lost that night. And this is why I got this bus. But because I got this bus, people found out who I was and I was a bus driver. So they asked me to start speaking here and there. And this bus has turned into something that has helped our community. It's turned into something that has helped our survivors because I'm doing something for them, not me. You know, when I have a parent that reaches out and says, Quentin, we thank you. They're still carrying pain from 33, 32, 33 years ago, losing their child. If I can help that through my faith and through having this bus, that's what I'm going to do. Thank you.